I'm excited. I really am. I mean, our guys, uh, since we have come back, have put in an awful lot of work uh, to get us to this point. Uh, we've had a lot of live at bats. We've played as much as we possibly could uh, around the rain uh, that we've had, but our guys have, uh, have performed very well, especially uh, on the pitching end. Uh, so uh, we're excited to get started. We're excited to play somebody else besides ourselves. Uh, we're excited about having a big crowd come out opening weekend. Uh, hopefully the weather cooperates with us uh, and we're able to get three games in against a quality opponent in William and Mary. Uh, so uh, you know, just kind of itching to get there. We know about Hennessy, but what about the rest of the weekend rotation? Uh, the rest of the weekend rotation, we, we'll go with Jacob Hennessy uh, in game one. Uh, in game two, we will go with Brooks Crawford. And in game three, we will go with Jake Higginbotham. So those three guys will get the ball opening weekend, uh, one, two, and three. And I'm going to be completely honest with you, we really struggled um, you know, with these decisions because we had about six guys, honestly, that pitched well enough to start. I and mean, we've had a hard time scoring. In the last six, seven inter squads, we have had a hard time scoring runs. And that's just a testament to Coach C and the pitching staff and how well they've thrown. But there were a number of guys in the mix. Uh, but we felt like first weekend, these guys have experience uh, and they, they've thrown well enough to deserve to start. Uh, but uh, you know, we're, we're excited about a number of guys and how they've been throwing the baseball. Lefty, right, lefty, you like that? We do to too. That. that and that and that was part of it as well. And you know, we feel like when you go left, right, left, you know, then you, it, it gives the opponent a different look each day. They're all very different. You know, even Hennessy to Higginbotham is two totally different left-handers. Uh, so uh, you know, it forces you as a manager to have to flip the lineup a little bit and think about you know how you want to construct your lineup. It, it makes it a little bit more challenging uh, on the coaches' end. So, uh, but those guys, all three of them, have thrown the ball really well, and I'm excited to see how they do this. Yeah. Hennessy says he's worked on a changeup. How much does that help him as a starter? Well, that's a great question because that's the reason he's starting. Um, you know, we. We loved his dependability out of the bullpen, and he was mostly a fastball slider guy out of the bullpen last year. But the progress uh, of the changeup is why he's starting. Um, his changeup right now, the last two starts, it's, it's Charlie Barnes-like. I mean, it's been that good of a pitch to where hitters know it's coming and they're swinging through it. Um, you know, it's a little bit more of a straight change than Charlie's was or Charlie's is. Um, but it's uh, it's a really really good pitch. It's extremely effective. Is Higginbotham 100% back, and are you worried about his luck? Well, he's 100% back uh, right now. Um, you know, do you worry about the rust? Uh, just the in-game experience against somebody else. It's been a while for him, uh, but I know he's worked awfully hard to put himself in this position. So I think he's he's going to be pretty excited to go out there. His last outing, uh, he was touching 94. So I would say he's healthy. Uh, he's pitching in the low 90s with a power breaking ball, uh, so uh, you know, that's pretty pretty electric stuff coming at you in game three. Have you made decisions on other spots in the lineup where there might have been some question marks? Uh, yeah, we feel like we have. I mean, there's still a couple guys that, that we want to see how they do today. We're going to play a short inner squad today uh, just to kind of wrap up uh, with our looks as a, as a coaching staff. But, uh, you know, uh, um, we, we feel like we have a pretty good idea of what we'll do in terms of a starting lineup, but I'd say it's, it, you know, probably 10 to 11 guys. I don't know if I'm at nine uh, right now, but there, there's probably 10 to 11 guys that I have in mind, and it's just a matter of making that final decision on them. I would imagine that weekend rotation still probably like a work in progress. You might see other guys. Well, I think, I'll, I'll be honest. I mean, again, um, I, I think there's a number of guys who made their case that they could start for us. Uh, guys like Spencer Strider, uh, guys like Travis Moore, guys like Matt Clark, uh, Ryan Miller, um, all of those guys threw the ball very well and, and we could have put them in the weekend rotation and, and felt very good about it. Uh, we feel like with Strider and Moore, uh, Miller, Clark, um, you know, even Gilliam, obviously at the end of the ball game, Owen Griffith, uh, you can run, you know, for seven to eight innings, you know, you can run two different looks at a lineup before you get to the closer. So that's kind of the mindset uh, that we're going with is because, you know, these three guys we feel like have really good stuff. 
Uh, but, you know, if we're in a situation where about a fourth or fifth inning, we have to go to the pen, well, Ryan Miller, we can stretch him out. Spencer Strider, we can stretch him out. Matt Clark, we can stretch him out. Travis Marr, we can stretch him out. They can piggyback, as we call it, behind those guys, and it's a different look. Uh, so, um, you know, that's kind of the idea. I don't think you're going to look at this weekend rotation and say, you know, we're going to rely on seven to eight innings out of each guy a little bit like we did last year where we, we would run Barnes and Eubanks and Crawl, and if we could get into the seventh with those guys, that was kind of our goal. We don't feel like we have to do that necessarily this year. We feel like we have more depth uh, this year, and we feel like we can run a couple different uh, looks at a lineup, maybe use three to four guys in a ball game, uh, but hopefully, you know, uh, get the same result. Is it fluid then? Do some of those roles change every week? And reevaluate it after every series? Well, we're going to reevaluate it after after each series, but you know, I think if you've kind of watched what we've done over the last couple of years, we 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 try to trust our guys. I mean, we're going to keep giving them the ball and keep giving them opportunities, and you know, again, we're always going to you know, self-evaluate kind of where we're at and how guys are performing. Uh, but, um, you know, there's no question that they're starting because they've earned it. You know, they've earned the right to go out there and be weekend starters. It's not because we just picked them. I mean, it's because Brooks Crawford's got a zero ERA since he came back. And he's given up two hits in 11 innings. So he needs to start. Uh, Hennessy, the same thing. I mean, these guys, these guys have, ha haven't been touched. Uh, so uh, they've earned the right to start, uh, but we're always gonna gonna look at what we're doing and, and who's pitching well, and let's try to maximize what each guy can do within their roles to help us win ball games. Have you arrived at a point where you anticipate where Beer and Williams will see the most time in the field? Uh, yes, I have. Yeah, Seth will be in right field, and Chris Williams will be at first base until he's healthy enough to go behind the plate. Once Chris Williams is healthy enough to go behind the plate. My, I would anticipate leaving Seth in the outfield because we have some options that we can put at first base. Uh, but that being said, you know, until Chris is able to get behind the plate, uh, we're going to leave him at first base because he's an above average defender at first base. And we feel like right now Seth is moving extremely well in the outfield. He's playing a better right field right now than I've seen uh, than I've seen since he's been here. Who's going to get that nod in the center, and then how do you see the infield shaking out? Good question. I think center field is still a little bit up for grabs. You know, the two guys right now that are competing uh, for those roles are Teodosio, uh, Bryce Teodosio, a true freshman, uh, and Drew Wharton. You know, those two guys right now are in competition for the center field job, but I could also see scenarios where we play Teodosio in center and Wharton in left because they're both above average defensive outfielders. Uh, you could also see the scenario where we play Wharton in center and we put a guy like a Robert Jolly in left too, if we want to you know, have a little bit more of a veteran presence out there. So I um, feel pretty good either way. How about the infield third, second? Uh, you know, I feel like, uh, you know, I'd say Jordan, you know, is, is, is probably the guy that we would go to right now, you know, at second base, um, you know, with Chris at first base. Um, you know, Logan's going to play shortstop, and, um, you know, I would say Bird probably would have the upper hand because of his experience. But Patrick Cromwell, you know, has had some incredible at-bats, has done really well for us, can play third or play first base. And if we need to DH Chris, if he's a little bit sore and we need to DH him, we can easily si uh, slide Cromwell over there and play him at first base as well. And if we felt like uh, – you know, we needed to get Bird and Cromwell in the same lineup, and Chris is at first. We can play Bird at second and Cromwell at third. So I think we're going to try to find a way to get all of those guys work. But if I were to start it today, I would say that Greeny, you know, probably would, would be at second base, and we'd probably play Bird at third since they have a lot of experience in those two spots. Anything else? Good. Thank you.